Welcome to our Palm Sunday service on Sunday the 28th of March. If you're joining us for the first time, it's really great to have you with us and we hope that you enjoy your time with us today. My name's Chris and I'm the pastor at Braintree Baptist Church and it's my joy and honour to lead us in this time of worship today. As I've said, today is Palm Sunday where we celebrate and reflect upon Jesus's triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Let us therefore grab our palm leaves woo, and celebrate together as we join with the crowds in their celebratory chants as they welcome Jesus by saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. So let us sing together now as we welcome King Jesus into our midst today. Lord Jesus, we declare today that you are the Lord and Saviour of the world. You are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. We declare that all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to you. And so we come before you today in faith and in humility and ask that you would have mercy on us, for we are sinful. We thank you, Jesus, that you care deeply for us. And so we present our requests before you now, 
confident that you see our hearts and hear our prayers and are faithful. We'll now have a time of silence for you to open your hearts to the Lord today. Fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit this day so that we may see you for who you are and show others who you are. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory now and forever. Amen. Well, we're now going to have our reading from Matthew chapter 21 verses 1 to 11 which tells us of Jesus's triumphal entry into Jerusalem on that first Palm Sunday. And Mary is going to bring that to us now. Good morning. Um, this, you may well like to follow this morning's reading in your Bibles. So, and it comes from Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 to 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see your kingdom comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds then went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Thanks be to God. There is a famous story of Sir Walter Raleigh, one of the greatest explorers and travellers during the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. On one occasion, he was with the Queen when she was walking through London, when they came to a large muddy puddle. Sir Walter quickly took off his cloak and placed it on the ground so the Queen could walk over it without getting her feet muddy or wet. Now this chivalrous act has become famous worldwide because it's not the sort of thing that happens every day. To lay down one's cloak was a very special gesture indeed, especially if that was your only cloak. It communicates that you celebrate and value this person very highly. And if asked, you would give more than just your cloak to honour them in this way. Now, the crowd that came flocking to welcome Jesus into Jerusalem probably didn't have more than one cloak each. 
and yet they laid them down on the road in front of Jesus, creating the equivalent of a red carpet fit for royalty. This says something about who they hoped Jesus was, the long awaited Messiah, the true King of Israel. And Jesus seems um, to be affirming this hope for he deliberately rides in on a donkey to fulfill the prophecy of old. Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Now, along with the laying of cloaks, we see they also waved the branches that they cut from the trees to make a celebratory procession for Jesus. Now, this too carried royal implications. In the long folk memory of Jerusalem and its surrounding villages, stories were told of the famous Judas Maccabeus, who 200 years earlier had arrived triumphantly in Jerusalem after conquering the pagan armies that had oppressed Israel. He too was welcomed into the city with a crowd waving palm branches. As Jesus rode into Jerusalem, they no doubt made these connections and saw Jesus as their Judas Maccabeus, someone who would deliver them from the Roman army who had been oppressing them for years. And they waved their palm branches in great excitement at what they hoped Jesus had come to do. But this celebratory procession goes even further as the crowd begin to chant royal hymns as well, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Welcoming Jesus as the son of David was about as explicit as you could get. Why? Well, firstly, Jerusalem was the city that King David made the capital of the nation a thousand years before. And secondly, the Jews had been waiting and praying for hundreds of years since then for God to raise up another king like David, one who would save them and rescue them from their oppressors, someone who would bring peace, protection and prosperity for Israel, just as it was in the golden age of King David. The cloaks laid down on the road, the palm branches waved excitedly in the air, the chants of royal hymns declaring Jesus as the son of David. The crowds were convinced that the time had come. This was the moment. Jesus was the king they'd all been waiting for. Hurrah! But as we all know, the story doesn't play out quite how they hoped for. The writer Matthew is at pains throughout his gospel to show that Jesus is the one that they've all been waiting for. And he is the promised Messiah, the son of David, the king who will put all things right. But, but, it won't happen in the way that history has shown before or the way the crowd hoped it would. Jesus came to be enthroned in Jerusalem, yes, but it would not be on a chair, but on a cross. The exact opposite of what the crowd had hoped for, and his dis disciples for that matter, as we will see in the coming week. Jesus would not turn out to be the leader they expected him to be. 
Now, leadership is a very tricky thing indeed, as so many people's hopes and expectations are placed upon leaders, often unfairly. I remember going to a leadership conference a number of years ago when I was just starting out in leadership in my early 20s. And I remember one well-seasoned leader saying, leadership is about disappointing people at a rate they can handle. <laughs> now, I found this remark really odd at the time, and perhaps for that reason, it stuck with me. But the more I've grown in leadership and the greater my sphere of influence and responsibility has become, the more truth I see in this unexpected and strange remark. Those in leadership, particularly high leadership, inherit not only a history of those leaders before them, good or bad, but they also inherit everybody's hopes and expectations, many of which can be very idealistic or even unattainable. In the last few years, we have seen how divisive leadership can be, most notably in the United States, but also recently in Myanmar with the military coup and at home in the UK concerning Brexit and then COVID. Many of us can easily feel frustrated with our leaders, disillusioned and disappointed as we read the news and feel the effect of their decisions. Now, when this happens, it's so very easy for us all to participate in armchair leadership, where we start saying what they ought to be doing and all the things they've got wrong. We all think we know what's right and what needs to be done, don't we? But if your armchair became the seat of government with everyone looking to you, how long would your convictions and confidence last? I admit to sitting in the armchair from time to time and grumbling and spitting at some of the behaviour and decisions employed by our Prime Minister and his government. But this last year, particularly with COVID, I have often found myself saying, I'm glad I don't have that job. Leadership is not easy. It can often be a very lonely journey. And Jesus knew the loneliness and burden of leadership, of his calling. He knew what he had to do and it weighed on him heavily. He knew his disciples would struggle to understand his calling, let alone the crowds. But God's ways are higher than our ways. Where we see the immediate, God sees the infinite. Like with our leaders, we can often get frustrated with God. We find ourselves telling God what he ought to be doing, like Mary and Martha did in last week's story. We struggle to understand why he's not doing the things we think he should be doing. And the truth is, every one of us wants Jesus to ride into our lives and be the king we want him to be. We cry out, give me peace now, pay my bills and hurry. Give me a job by this time tomorrow. Transform my family problems ASAP. Sort my boss out at work. Now, it's not that these shouts of desperations are wrong. And I've said a few of those myself plenty of times. Peace, security, right relationships and work are all important things to us. And Jesus knows that we need them. And he wants to come and help us with those things. But nor is it that Jesus will only answer such prayers when our motives are pure and our lives are sorted. 
No, he came, didn't he, to seek and save the lost. But, but, <laughs> what we need to allow for in our prayers, in our requests of Jesus, is to allow him to be Lord. We need to allow Jesus to answer our prayers in his way and in his timing. And that's not easy, as Mary and Martha found last week. We need to trust him. We need to trust him. We need to trust that he knows best, that he sees the bigger picture and he knows what we truly need. The crowds shouting on Palm Sunday had a clear picture of who they wanted Jesus to be and what they felt he should do for them. Their cry was for Jesus to rescue them from the evil of their oppressors. And Jesus was coming to rescue them, but from evil in its fullest form, once and for all. Where we see the immediate, God sees the infinite. That's why prayer can sometimes feel like a traffic light system. Sometimes God will give the green light to our prayers and we will receive an immediate answer. Don't you love it when that happens? Those are the kind of prayers we want, aren't they? Immediate answers. Sometimes we get an amber light where God is calling us to wait, which can be incredibly exhausting, not to mention frustrating, as Mary and Martha experienced last week in our story. And sometimes God gives us a red light because what we have asked for is not right for us, however much we think it might be. As we reflect upon Jesus, upon his triumphal entry into Jerusalem today, are we prepared to let him be the king he wants to be and not the king we want him to be? If we call him Lord, are we allowing him to be Lord in our lives? Or are we continually grabbing the steering wheel off him? At the end of the day, it comes down to trust. Do we trust that Jesus loves us? Do we trust that he knows what's really best for us? Do we trust that he is just and merciful and will do what is right at the right time? Now, a verse that God has continually brought me back to time and time again in this last year, in all its ups and downs, is Proverbs 3, verses 5 to 6, which says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Today, Jesus is inviting us to do just that, to call him Lord and to entrust our lives to him again. And when we do, he will make our paths straight and bring us to where we need to be. So let's pray now together. Today, O oh Lord, I give myself to you. May your will be my delight today. May you have perfect sway in me. May your love be the pattern of my living. I surrender to you my hopes, my dreams, my ambitions. Do with them what you will, when you will, as you will. 
I place into your loving care my family, my friends, my future. Care for them with a care that I can never give. I release into your hands my need to control, my craving for status, my fear of obscurity. Eradicate the evil, purify the good, and establish your kingdom on earth. For Jesus' sake, amen. Amen. Well, let's sing together now as we continue to welcome Jesus, our Lord Jesus, into our hearts again. The Clifton family will now lead us in a time of intercessory prayer. Let us pray. Ride on, ride on in majesty. Hark all the tribes, Hosanna cry. O saviour meek, pursue your road with palms and scattered garments strode. We lift up our world leaders to you. We pray that you give them wisdom to make the right decisions for their countries and people. Help them seek your will and guidance in all the difficult decisions that they have to make. Help them to ensure everyone has access to the COVID vaccine, especially the poorest and hardest to reach communities. We pray for those living in poverty and with the help of organisations and charities like Tear Fund, that they are able to break the cycle of poverty and build a better lives for themselves their families and their communities. We lift up those countries who are experiencing war or unrest. We pray for peacemakers and peacekeepers working in those countries that they would have strength and courage to speak words of wisdom and kindness to ease the conflict and bring about peace. Ride on, ride on in majesty, in lowly pomp ride on to die. O Christ, your triumphs now begin. O oh, captive death and conquered sin. Lord Jesus, be with our local council as they make decisions about brain how brain tree will come out of lockdown. Help our local businesses and shops find a way out of lockdown too. Help the government have knowledge, the knowledge and the wisdom to make the right decisions for everyone. Help us to look after the planet you made for us to live on. Be with our teachers who are helping us learn and helping us go back into our normal school routine. Help us to spread the world of you and remember your joyful entrance into Jerusalem on a donkey as our king. 
Ride on, ride on in majesty, your last and fiercest strife is nigh. The father on his sapphire throne awaits his own anointed son. Father God, thank you that there is the technology to have an online service and people who are able to put the service together. Loving Father, come for all those we know who are unwell, worried, sad or lonely, put your caring hands around them and support them. I pray that the deacons and Pastor Chris will know how and when to reopen the church and that they will seek your plan for the future of Braintree Baptist Church. I pray that you will be with all of our church fellowship and that we will be able to keep in contact during this time. Help us to be kind and loving to all those we know and love, just as you taught us. Ride on, ride on in majesty, in lowly pomp ride on to die. Bow your meek head to mortal pain, then take, O oh God, your power and reign. Amen. As we draw our service to a close, let us hail once more the Lord's anointed one, Jesus Christ, as we sing together now.
Well, let's say the grace together, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Amen. Well, that concludes our service, uh, but a few notices before we finish. Uh, celebrations, as we say each week, we like to celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. And yesterday was Richard Hadfield's birthday. So a belated happy birthday to you, Richard, and we hope that you had a great day. And also um, a unique anniversary. Yesterday was also Barry Walton's 50th anniversary from his ordination as a minister. So congratulations, Barry. Um, and we hope that you had a blessed time yesterday as well. Well, the only other thing to say is that obviously on Sundays, uh, we have coffee and chat after our service on Zoom every Sunday at 11.30 a.m. And all the details for that are on the email that was sent out. And you can join us online or via the landline. We're looking forward to a number of services next week, uh, this coming week, for our Easter week. And we hope that you can, in, you can join us for those services. Uh, most of those will be online, uh, but we will be doing a service at the church um, for Easter Sunday. And all details for how you book into that will be released very shortly. But I hope that this coming week is a good week for you and that you know the peace of God and that you're able to trust him with your lives, no matter how confusing and difficult they become. The Lord will see you through. God bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you as you go into this coming week. God bless.